today's video, we're going to be taking on the Death Star. Fancy intro music, yeah! Woohoo! Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about Borg Solo Armadas. Obviously they just rolled out here recently and you'll notice that there are some events that you need to do involving them. So I guess the best thing to do because of that is to discuss what are the best strategies for taking on the Borg, specifically Borg Armadas. And yes, we do need to eventually talk about how we can update the Vidar and stuff like that. But with the We Are The Borg SMS and We Are The Borg SLB and Resistance Is Not Futile SMS and obviously more Borg Armada stuff coming, how do we effectively take these down? What is the most effective strategy and Good thing for you guys and gals out there, we did a lot of math on the Twitch stream, so y'all didn't have to. So we actually busted out the handy dandy calculator, and we'll use this here in a second, to show you why some of these strategies are effective and what you need to do to be effective against these. So real quick, while you're here, just go ahead and do me a huge solid favor and smash that like button so that you can get notified of every time we go live, assuming you hit the subscribe button and that bell as well. So. The number one thing that you need to do for Borg Solar Armadas, this is a mechanic designed for level 35 plus players, is you need to actually go into your research tree. So in the combat research, four new researches got added that will improve your ability to fight these Borg Solar Armadas. Get about halfway down the tree and you'll find them right here. These TransLink Disruptors for Federation, Klingon, Romulan, and then finally the ISS Jelly? I, I don't know, guys. I mean... I literally griped up like, why is this not the Defiant? Like, why the ISS Jelly? You literally made the Defiant for Solo Armadas. That was the whole point. Comment down below if this makes no sense to you either. But anyway, getting my big head off the screen. These are very important. Let me explain why. So this will basically turn any faction ship you have into a Vidar. Now, if you are not familiar with a Max Vidar, because this combat a system is built around a maxed Vidar. The Vidar has a ship bonus that gives it a, you know, a huge, huge increase fighting the Borg. That was the whole point of it when it came out three years ago. It is called Cybernetic Augmentation. The Vidar's damage is boost 35,000% against Borg hostiles. That's why even to this day, we still use it against probes and should something new come out, a new variant of this or whatever, then we would need it to do something similar as well. But for this, because we are still using the Vidar and it does still exist, these researches simply turn your ship into a Vidar. You basically give that bonus to your Valdor, your Augur, your Pylum, your Dederix. See that in a second. You wanna see something really crazy? Oh man, the Dederix go burr. That's exciting, right? You get to do this kind of stuff too. You wanna to put out massive criticals and destroy Borg Armadas and break the math? Well, don't worry, we're gonna show you how. So, Let's jump into this. So after you've done your research, that's the key. And then you can kind of go and say, hey, look at this right here. This Borg Sphere didn't stand a chance. And it's pretty rare for you to see something like 500 million power. And you think, well, that's got to be impossible to beat, right? It's really not. And we'll go over a couple logs. What I want to do first, though, is actually show you these Borg Solo Armadas and explain why we're going to use some of the strategies that I'm going to recommend that you employ. So one of the main cards that we're used to running against Armadas is 6 of 11. 6 of 11 being a huge officer because of piercing. Now, if you aren't familiar with how 6 of 11 works, I did make a video about him a while ago. He is a fantastic officer to use to adjust the piercing values of the ship to basically lower your opponent's mitigation. Here's the problem. This is a baby. This is a level 35, very, very small Borg Armada. It's basically the smallest Borg Sphere available. And yet its defensive stats are 1 million for the primary shield deflection and 800,000 essentially for armor and 744k for dodge. Why are those numbers important? Because that's going to determine the amount of mitigation the Borg Sphere has. And if you want to compare, well, let's, let's come over to one of these systems over here like Azadi. Azadi's got around 35s in there, so let's just go ahead and grab an Armada. There's a 33. Let's just, you know, let's use 33s just to show you the stark difference. I could have gone to a 35, but let's just look at this real quick. Look at the defensive stats here, 50,000. So you're talking about something having a multiplier of about, you know, 10 times what a normal Armada has. 
So what that ends up translating into, for those who are unfamiliar with how the mitigation and piercing process works in Star Trek Fleet Command, is it simply means that you're going to have a very tough time dumping their mitigation or getting it really, really low. Now, there are a few officers that focus in on this as a ability. One of those is the aforementioned 6 of 11 right uh, here. Well, probably my favorite, especially once you get working on the max. Defenses are irrelevant when the targets in Armada dumping the piercing stats are increasing uh, the piercing stats to dump that. But that would mean that your piercing values have to get into the millions. And that can be very difficult to do without a lot of stat stacking. Now, and when I say a lot, if you want an actual number, we're talking about you needing a couple hundred thousand stat stacking. We went over that on Twitch. It's ridiculous. But you have other officers that can do same thing, just again, not going to be as effective. Data's officer ability, same thing, but we'll talk about data here in a second, using him for another reason and why it can be good, even if it's not for that. So that's going to change how we load out crews. So let me pull up a log and show you what we ended up running as an example. So Migas is 48. Here are some of the crews that I use. My Valdor was running 5-7 con instead of 5-6 con. We're all used to 5-6 con. We ran 5-7 con here. Why do we run 5-7 con? Number one, one thing that these ships do not have is incredible piercing themselves. You can actually overcome their piercing. It's a lot lower than their defense. See, I'm going against a 48 here with five and four million defensive stats, but their piercing values really aren't that ridiculous. So now I've got our good friend five of 11 for synergy so that I have mitigation. And then seven is simply going to boost my health numbers, thus improving my ability versus these armadas. Let me unclick this health button. So that's why I'm running seven. The plus bonus to health of officers on a ship and then five of 11. Con, obviously there for criticals. The other thing that I'm going to add in this video is that the two things, two, listen right here. It's six, seven minutes in. Two things that you want to build around solar armadas. You want every ship you have to be doing a critical if possible, and you want your mitigation stats boosted. So. There are several ways to do this. My first crew here is a critical base crew with mitigation. I put my strongest ship on there. Typically, if you run five in an Armada crew, you want it on your strongest ship for the loot distribution. Then we're going to take a look at my Katinga. I was running Cisco Miles Lorca, which is a critical and mitigation build. Again, mitigation right there, and then criticals, compounding every round. And then my final ship was running a loot crew for this particular one, but still had mitigation. Mitigation and right there more criticals now why am i so big on criticals in this because it goes back to that research i brought up earlier on in the video remember that research i really harped on let's bring out our handy dandy calculator so if you take a look at all these shots look at some of these criticals we start hitting 17 million the auger doing 13 million what we really want to do is start looking around twos and stuff for that auger obliterator weapon so we can really give some love to that auger. So, woo doggy, look at this one. 159 million damage. That's a lot. If y'all aren't aware, that's a very large number. That might not be as impressive as a Dederodix going brrr, but it's still impressive. Speaking of, I gotta play it again. Shout out to my friend Draco. I love that freaking bird going brrr. It's beautiful. One billion damage is insane, but look here. This is the power of a critical build with that officer, not officer bonus, that research bonus that has made my faction ships all essentially into Vidars. And this goes into remembering how damage works. So before we talk about mitigation here in this log, I want to give you a quick reminder how damage works. Let's say that your ship created 10 damage. Cool, 10 damage, no big deal. Just 10, who cares? But let's take a look at the ship for my auger, my critical bonus, this is the critical bonus, 276%. So that means that we're going to essentially multiply 10 by 2.76 and now i'm doing 27.6 but if you remember what did i include on the ship i had lorca hiding over on my other ships so now i have hull breach and hull breach on top of that is then multiplying it again by 1.5 40. so that damage increase your damage calculation that 35,000 percent boost you get for your primary ship is part of your initial damage calculation Criticals are a calculation after your math works out to get you your big number. And then you have another one after that hull breach. So critical builds, taking advantage of the research the game added, creating monster 
damage. Let me go back to that because it's just that auger shot in round two just makes me so giddy to, to see that big ship going. Brrr, ah, it's beautiful. 159 million. But now let's take a look at the mitigation. Remember, I said because of the defense stats, you're going to really struggle to make great uh, or take down its mitigation. So we actually need to take a look at 104 million, 847, 816 divided by 159, 585, 716. And it was mitigating 65.7% of that because the auger doesn't have great piercing values compared to a level 48 armada because that thing had like 5 million defense. But the good thing is I created so much damage, I still put 11 million hull damage to it in one shot. Now, my other ships can do better, but here's one thing I do want to point out. You're going to struggle to really lower their mitigation values with your piercing because of how big they are. And even some of the biggest whales in the game aren't going to be stacking 200,000 stats on every one of their ships. But what you can do with very common loadouts is increase your mitigation. Take a look at my Valdor, for example. My Valdor receives uh, or mitigates 1276006 6 out of a 1868108 shot. That means I mitigated 68.3%. If you remember, the maximum mitigation you can get is 71.19, 71.2. So I'm like 3% from max mitigation. So even though I can't destroy their mitigation, I can ensure that my ship survive as long as possible. And that's what makes the two biggest weak points for these Borg solos. They do not have an amazing piercing value to match their defensive value. So you can boost your mitigation, thus meaning you survive longer in the fight and number two they have a great research that you need to invest in thus allowing you to take advantage of critical builds now real quick besides the crews that i just showed let me rattle off some officers that you might have if you don't have the ones that i do so if you don't have for example bashir and we need to talk about a critical build well let's go back to our friend data here data does have an away team uh, that you can use to unlock him some people have unlocked data where i have it so for example, positronic precision when fighting hostiles and armadas increases critical hit chance by 17%. Now he can get a maximum plus 8% if you went full synergy, but if you wanted to combine him with somebody say like Beverly, so Beverly giving you more mitigation and then him giving you more critical chance, that would give you a 20% bonus because the synergy between Beverly and data is 3%, so 20%. So still giving you a better critical hit chance. You can also decide like, hey, I want to hit criticals with my biggest ship as quickly as possible. And you can take that Bashir uh, combination and add Bashir to Cisco if you want to run Cisco, Miles, Bashir to essentially guarantee you're getting criticals as well as the multi shots with Bashir. But when it comes down to it, you want to focus on things that give you mitigation and criticals. Khan gives you criticals. Bashir gives you criticals. Data gives you criticals. I mean, Cisco gives you criticals. There's several officers. And then when it comes to mitigation, you actually have it a little bit easier. There's a lot of officers that do mitigation boosts like 5 of 11 and, and Beverly. And you even have some of the old school officers in there like um, Zhao works. And you can use on an Enterprise. You know, Kirk and Morale giving you Zhao and boosting that. Zhao still works against Armadas, right? It's either Zhao or Vim, it doesn't. And I never remember which. And DJ Oki does not. So you can't use DJ Oki. Uh, but you can use Zao because they never changed that for whatever reason. So the two basic things I really want to harp on for you to remember as you go throughout this process is number one, remember, boost your mitigation. Number two, build around criticals. And obviously the big point that we made at the beginning of the video, you need to do the research that turns every faction ship you have into a Vidar. And that is the easy beasy lemon squeezy. And if you have more questions, come join me on my Discord simple as that that's the answer there's what you need to know and hopefully you can now go take down those solos that you didn't think you could take down we've got level 35 players taking down level 41 solo armadas i'm taking down 48s i can punch even higher probably into the 50 range several levels above where i'm at all based on crewing and knowing how these things work hopefully this helped out a little bit of math help you out a little bit too maybe maybe live long and prosper stay safe for those space cowboys deuces that's me catch you with the next rev deuce star trek fleet command video I guess I could join somebody else's team. Bye. An even better outro than the intro. For the empire and glory to your house.